Hi, my name's Debbie and I'm a lecturer at Worcester College of Technology. Today I'm going to demonstrate the shampooing procedures. First of all, we need to go on our client. Do you want to sit in for me? Certainly. Thank you. This is a really important part of the shampooing process is to make sure your, your client is really gowned up very well. We use a, a black gown and a towel. Once the client's gowned up, we then ask the client to sit back and position her neck so it's very comfortable for her. Is that okay for you? Yes, Always check with the client to make sure they are comfortable. Then what we do is just remove some of the hair from the face, especially if they've got a fringe, and do it while your hands are, are dry. If the client has got any big earrings or any glasses, ask them to remove them. Then we turn on the tap. The way we check the water is on our wrist. So just let it run for a few seconds, just check it on the wrist. If you feel that the temperature is okay, you then place it onto the client's head. Is that okay for you? Yes, thank you. Always check in with the client that the water is okay. Then, using your one hand that's free, we're going to use cup movements and we're pushing the water away. I'm holding the shower head so it's directing into the basin, not directly onto the client's head. And we're pushing the water away. When we come to the ears, again, we use the cupping movement. So this will stop any water getting into your client's ears. Making sure you're getting all the way around, particularly the nape. The nape is actually where it gets the most, the greasiest. So, again, cupping it all around making sure we're getting the client's hair really, really wet through. There we are. Once that we've done that and it's all completely wet through, always remember to turn your tap off, really just for the client's comfort. Then we remove any of the excess water just by squeezing the hair really gently. Then taking your shampoo, we're just going to use about one pump. That's all you really need. Then what we're going to do is just rub it all together in our hands. We're then going to use a technique called effluage. This will help us to apply the product evenly through the hair. So, just starting from the top and just working all the way through. Nice and gentle movements. We're then going to start our shampooing technique. The first technique that I'm going to show you is what we call friction. Now friction is a fast rubbing movement and it helps to remove any buildup or debris on the hair. So, taking our fingers, like, a, like a, a duck, and we're going to use quick movements all the way down. Starting at the top, working all the way down to the very, very nape. Again, really very, very quick movements all the way around. So this way it will remove any of the, the build-up that we might have. The very, very quick rubbing movements on the head, on the head there. It's the same, making sure you're getting right down in the nape and also behind the ears. When you're standing behind a, a basin, you need to be aware of your posture. If you can see, I'm actually just using my knees to bend down, so I'm not, not leaning over so much. So, once we've done our friction, we're now going to do what we call a rotary movement, which is using circles around the head. Again, up and down. You need to be quite firm when she's shampooing. Clients really like to feel a good shampoo. So, this is our rotary. So we're moving in circular movements all the way around. Again, quite firm. Okay. And then what we can do then is go back to your friction, which is your really, really fast movements. Whilst I'm at the back, I'm holding my hands with my thumbs quite wide so I can really cover a lot of area. And when we're coming down to the sides and the back, if you notice, I'm actually holding my model's head to keep it still. 
Sometimes on your very first shampoo, you might find that it doesn't foam up that well. But you'll find this on the second shampoo that it will be a lot better. Okay. Once we're happy with that, we then need to take off all the hair from the face. Just like so. And then turn the tap back on. And always check the temperature on your wrist. Is that okay for you? Yes, thank you. And then again, always ask your, your client. Using all your same methods as what we did to wet the hair through at the start. Making sure I'm having a really nice rinse through. And make sure your hands are free from any soaps. Squeeze out the excess water and I'm going to reapply another a second shampoo. Some clients won't need to have uh, two shampoos, but others will. So, again, squeeze out any excess water. That's it. Follow exactly the same. So, we're going to be doing our effluage, which is applying the product evenly throughout the hair. And then we're going to be doing our friction to make sure we remove any buildup of the products. You can see I'm really very, very quick. Quick movements around the hair. Don't be afraid to be quite firm also. Like I said earlier, the client really likes to feel a good, you know, have a good rub on their scalp. And then we're just going to go back through some rotary. So you can see now the hair's really foamed up now. When you're shampooing longer hair, you do need to be a bit more careful when some of these uh, massage techniques um, as to not knotting up the hair. Um, also, when you are doing longer shampooing, um, obviously you're not ruffling up at the ends of the hair. You just really need to be smoothing it, smoothing the shampoo through. So again, bringing all the hair off the face. Checking your water temperature again on your wrist. Is that okay for you? Yes, and again, on the client's head. It's really important because it, it can change. So what we're going to do now, we need to give it a really, really good final rinse. So we don't want to leave any, any shampoo through on the hair. Had a really good rinse through and again make sure you rinse your own hands through and we squeeze out the excess water then using a clean towel we're just going to pat dry the hair it is really important to do this if the hair is left too wet obviously it will dilute down the conditioner and it won't take us won't have as much effect just dump it just patting it all the way through Again, no rubbing, never rub your hair once it's, uh, when it's wet. So, taking in, we're going to use the same movement as we did for the shampooing, which is our effluage, to make sure that the product is uh, evenly applied. A nice stroking movement. We're now going to use a massage technique called petrissage. Petrissage is a kneading massage. So, taking our hands, that shape, and we're really just massaging using tiny, tiny circular movements. The idea of this is to actually try and move the scalp. A lot of uh, clients suffer with a lot of tension um, you know, in their heads, so this is a really, really nice way to relax them. So you're just moving around the whole of the head. Just nice circular movements. So you just knead in the head. And don't forget the 
tonight. So, you can see my hands are doing really nice slow movements. Once we've done that, we then finish off with a bit of effluage. client has got long hair, um, this would be your time to do your detangling um, with your comb on it. That's okay, is that okay for mm -hmm. you? The Petrosad massage is actually better done on shorter hair. On longer hair, it can get a bit more tangled. So, we've done that. Again, squeezing out the excess water. We then go round to the client at the front. Always come round to your client. Help them lift their neck up. With your towel, we're then going to wrap it around the client's head. So, pull the one furthest from you over to the centre first. Take the next part over. And then put the towel up. And then just gently, maybe, some just pat round, really. Okay, and that's how we need to carry out your shampooing and conditioning. <laughs>